Running commentary. We are exploring listening to albums. It is a lost art form. Wham, make it big. You put the boom boom into my heart. From the beginning, this kind of 50s pastiche thing that Wham were doing, this song is absolutely stuck in 1984 and it can stay there as far as I'm concerned. But I will say this, whoever was doing the musicianship on this record, these guys in the back were having a lot of fun with the brass and the organs and the percussion. Everything she wants is the big grown-up hit. It's the, for the first time, well not for the first time, but probably from a teeny bop band standpoint, talks about a woman having an agenda. The fact that the woman is running the guy ragged and then the coldness of a statement that George makes like, um, and now you tell me that you're having my baby. I'll tell you that I'm happy if you want me to. I don't think Wham have a really a bigger hit with women than everything she wants. Dion Estes is on bass and he obviously scored a hit uh, in America in 1985 with Heaven Help Me, it wasn't a hit in England. I couldn't really tell you that much about the song, but Dion Estes was a part of Wham's core group together with um, Pepsi and Shirley, who were the background singers. DC Lee obviously had moved on to not just sing, but shack up with Paul Weller and the Style Council. It's important to note as well that here again is Anne Dudley on cable. So this woman's really getting around the major acts of the 1980s. Heartbeat is super poppy. I've written here that it's teenage dream schlock. It's too close to the freedom writing. Um, I do like the glossy synth piano that happens on this track, but you know, really and truly it's like just sort of floppy and flaccid and just not very exciting. And it's important to note here, isn't it, that, that George Michael or Wham are producing the album. So there's there's a lot of confidence given to uh, George Michael's ability. And, and let's not forget here as well, Careless Whisper, which is on the album, is presented to the United States as a Wham single. Back home in England, it's a George Michael single. So there's a lot of confidence. I think George Michael probably demanded that. You know, he had the ability to go into um, Epic Records and write his own ticket as a premier star from 1983 with Club Tropicana really doing the business. I will say this, I don't know that I've ever known somebody to grow so much hair in such a short space of time. When I think of George prancing around on the beach in Club Tropicana, you know, he was shorter haired and he didn't have very many clothes on. But by the time we got to Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, there was a full, <laughs> full-blown cheer hairstyle, which was like really just this voluminous conk that he had going on, you know, uh, Aquanet being sprayed from every direction to keep this beast under control. So, Hasute is definitely a word that we would associate with uh, Yorgos Panayutu. Let's not forget that George is of Greek descent. Like a Baby is very of the time. It's a showcase for what I would say is Andrew Ridgely's adequate guitar work. I'm sure in a tropical setting, sucking down a daiquiri, this would be just the ticket. Freedom's one of those songs where you look back to it and you kind of gloss over it. It's like, oh yeah, freedom. But if you actually sit down and listen to it again, you'll realize that its Motown sensibility was just absolutely right on the money. The vocals were heartrending. The falsetto was great, the harmonies were great, the melody was great, and I really think that, you know, the affecting, believable falsetto on Freedom, together with its confident, newly empowered George Michael at the helm of this thing, really steering Wham towards, and ultimately, George Michael. You have to remember there's only one other album after Make It Big, which is the final, and my heart goes out to this point at Andrew Ridgely. I can't even imagine what it must have been like to be Andrew originally. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I think for obvious reasons, I think Andrew was getting a fair share of the tale that was available. And I, I think there's something about listening back to make it big with experienced ears, which makes it difficult at times to take the record seriously. I feel for George Michael, and but I also feel for the audience here. Did they feel duped? Did they feel as though they'd been sold a bill of fare that was like bullshit and phony? Like, 
is he a misogynist? Is the reason he's saying that everything she wants is because he's a raging queen and he hates women? Like you, you, all of this dynamic changes with Make It Big. It really is the strangest thing to sit and listen to a teen album of somebody that later came out. Remember, George Michael doesn't come out till 12 years later, maybe 13. That's a long period of time to be kind of straddling the fence of homosexuality and heterosexuality. Of course we understand why, of course we sympathize, we get it. But it does make reviewing this album tricky. If You Were There is good, it's not great. Uh, credit Card Baby, I really liked this when I got the album. I tried to recreate the magic. It tries to create the magic of a classic Motown hit, but it, it kind of fits, uh, misses. It falls painfully short of that hard to recreate magic. It picks up on Go Go sensibility. It's that kind of 50s, I'm so cute and I can string words together. Careless Whisper is surrounded in so many different things. Let's just say that it's a breathtaking moment in time. They were able to capture exactly what George Michael wanted to be, which was this sort of Mediterranean god. Careless Whisper just captures the essence of what it was that George Michael went on to become. Wham! Make it big. The final mark is 75%. This is an album which is essentially used to get you ready for George Michael's solo career. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, recommend it to friends, post comments. Also, if you have an album that you'd like to hear reviewed, we welcome your requests.